What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of La Liga Career Mode. This is episode number 39. We start today just off with yet another big bid for one of my starters. Carlos Neva, now wanted by Bayer Leverkusen, 25.4 mil bid turned down. Of course he's staying right here, is still our starting left back since the very beginning of the save. And on the back of that win over Sociedad B, we find out our opponents for the Copa del Rey last 16. And it's Getafe away, where as you'll see, Real Madrid have been knocked out of the Copa del Rey this year. And heading into the last 16, that is our first game of today's episode. Getafe away from home. I was looking at the teams remaining. Yes, Atletico are still in there. Yes, Barcelona are still in there. Yes, there are some big teams still in there. But I was thinking, right now, we're we're doing really well. We're in the top four. We're in a title race. Cups? Yeah. Why not? Like, this could be the season, man. Like, this could be the season. The last two years, we were knocked out in the last 32. This could be the season where we have our first proper cup run. Nine minutes in to the first game of today's episode, the Copa del Rey last 16 against Getafe, where you'd say we're firm favourites. Oh man, psychologically, I can't do it. I can't do it. The wonder kid, Fabio Carvalho, opens the score for Getafe. I I'm so excited for this guy, man. Seriously, I really am to see what he does at Liverpool. Obviously, as we know, Fulham, we talked about before, man. They've got a, they got a great record of uh, producing uh, young talents. Obviously, Patrick Roberts' career is stalled, as we know, when he first burst on the scene. He looked like a hell of a young talent. Harvey Elliott uh, set a record to be the youngest player. I think EFL Cup history, Fulham, when he was 15 years old. Um, uh, obviously moving on to Liverpool had a successful loan spell with Blackburn you know and obviously for Carvalho as well what a season he had last year with Fulham you know helping him get the title last year in the championship to go back to the Premier League obviously Fulham will be gutted to lose him don't get me wrong but I'm very excited to see how his career pans out and of course whilst there is still a possibility he could select England on the national stage for the senior level I don't think it's going to happen. I will be honest. I mean, I'm clutching at straws here. I'm pretty sure he's going to choose Portugal now. He's had a couple of under-21 caps there. But even so, great young talent. He scored the first two goals for Getafe. And then we went 3-0 down. And I was like, all right, I'm sick of this, man. I really, really am. Stoppage time. We got a goal back and a perfect time to get it as well. Right before the break to give us a glimmer of hope. How we went into the dressing room 3-0 down, it would have been game over. But Antonio scores his first header, I believe, of his career to make it 3-1. And that meant there was still a definite possibility we could get back in this game. Until eight minutes after the restart when Getafe restored their free goal cushion. Oh, my God. What is it? About the Copa del Rey. I'm sick of it. I really am. And you know what? Just, yeah, forget it. Like, just seriously. I don't even know what to say at this point. I really don't. You know, in the last episode, when we conceded that third goal against Batiste, and I was talking about how embarrassing it was, and I need to show it. What was this? I mean, I guess you could say I took my eyes off the prize because I knew we had no chance of going through at this point. But, uh, I mean, this is this this is just like, this is this is literally, what is that? Like, I'm, I'm trying to describe what this moment is. I don't even know. Passing out from the back, ordinarily no problems. But for that moment now, I just literally rolled the ball back to Getafe. I had so much time. It was just terrible. Absolutely terrible. And the final score was Getafe 5, Granada 1. Second defeat in three in all competitions, and we dumped out of the cup in the last 16. And I'm, I'm just, you know what? I'm, I'm resigned to it now. We will never have a domestic cup run in Spain. Third straight year, we failed to get to the last eight and beyond. We would have been taking on a Fletico in the quarters, how we made it through, to be fair. So I wouldn't fancy our chances there against Simeone's side. But even so, I, I can't do the cup. I really can't. And it's, it's really ironic as well because, like, if you watch my realistic career mode, um, which I just finished last month, firstly, thank you so much. You guys know I had an absolute blast with that, say, one of my favourites in recent years. But I, I was the cup king, man. Like, I was the cup specialist, you know? Like, we, we reached Wembley every single season of the save. We had tons of cup finals. We had EFL cup finals. Tw we had two EFL cup finals. Now, admittedly, I lost them both. But I got to both EFL cup... Two, two EFL cup finals in five years, two different teams. I won the FA Cup three years in a row with two different teams. I was the cup king. Wembley was my second home. I was renting an apartment around the corner because I knew I'd be there every time April and May came around. I mean, I was the cup king, but I don't know what it is about this save. I just can't do it. The Copa del Rey, psychologically, I just can't do it, you know? Like, we're not winning cups, but instead, I'm a mug. I literally, I can't do it, man. I really can't. It's just embarrassing. I mean, literally, season one, I was knocked out by a Segunda Division side. 
when my own player scored what was the winning goal against me. I'll never, ever forget that. Antonin, who was on loan at the time, scored the winning goal against me. Last season, we were torn apart by Villarreal in the last 32. And this year, we only just scraped by a B team, Sociedad's reserve side. And then we got thrashed by Getafe with probably my strongest lineup possible out there. I mean, forget it. I'm not, I, I can't do it. I'm a mug. I'm not a cup winner in this save. I'm a mug instead. Unbelievable. Anyway, transfer deadline day rolled around. And as you did see there, we had a loan offer for Inteca for, for, from Atletico Madrid. And I was like, what? Why? Like, what, what, what? what? Why? You're above us in the table by a point and there's 16 games to go. He's the second highest scorer in the league and we're both chasing Real Madrid for the title. Diego, have you suffered a concussion or something? Why would I give you Randy and Tecca on loan? You know what, man? Like, seriously, I talked about it before. Like, I, I really I really do feel at times. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you this. Um, February comes around. Here are our fixtures. Big ones here in the league, including Villarreal away. But our Europa League um, preliminary round, knockout round, is against At At Atalanta. I never got a draw for this. I, I don't know where it's because like the preliminary round um, doesn't get um, a, a special draw in a news article, but I, I never I never saw the draw for this. But you found out at the same time as me. February we've got Atalanta in the Europa League preliminary round, and I'll be honest here, they are a Champions League knockout side. They finish in third place in the group. They're going into the Europa League to face us. I think we're better. I think, and you'll see the team in the next episode. I, I think we've got a slightly better team, to be honest. But even so, we'll have to wait and see. But um, yeah, like I think, I think for me, and just to break away from the immersion here for our third and uh, third of four games today. Um, sorry, second of three games today against Deportivo Alavés here at home. I do feel like realism in the transfer market needs to be worked on because I think it has gotten better. Do you remember? You know, you go back to like FIFA 15, for example, a long time ago. I know, but do you remember back in the day when like Bayern Munich would have like nine strikers or something, like nine of the world class strikers. And no, there's no real kind of like plan or strategy to their transfer market. It has gotten better, don't get me wrong. But I think sometimes it's a little bit like immersion breaking. I mean, that, that deal would make literally no sense. And Tech is not on the loan list, obviously. And um, it just kind of like, it makes you think, what? Like, what sense is there for that? You know, it's crazy. Even so, for the following game, yes, Deportivo, Alaves, and I was thinking, all right, okay. Really tough little mini patch here for Granada. We've seen Real now open up a four-point gap at the top of the table after I lost to Real Batiste. And after getting thrashed by Getafe in the cup, I was thinking, Deportivo Alaves, newly promoted at home. This surely should be a banker. Well, we fell behind early, and whilst we did get back on level terms, I still knew that a draw would be disastrous. Real would open up an even bigger gap on us, presumably six points, and obviously a draw and a slip-up in a banker, that's something you simply can't afford to do. Thankfully, we turned it round. Luis Mia scored our first, and then Nico Williams chipped it over the goalkeeper to bag our second, what proved to be the game winner as well. Another one of those games where I had to grind it out as well. You know, we had six more shots than Alaves, but you were seeing by the XG there, we weren't we weren't really in control of the game at all. You know, just grinded out the victory and managed to get the three points there. And Nico Williams, by the way, what a sign this year for me, man. He's been incredible. But get the win, keep pace with Real Madrid. And, you know, obviously this month we've got Atalanta in, in the Europa League preliminary round. I'm just starting to wonder, like, we struggled mightily to get out of the group in the Europa League. We only did it on the final day, courtesy of Frankfurt doing us a favour and beating Strasbourg. I'm just thinking, when Thursday night comes round, I might just rest my players and say, do you know what? Forget it. Like, we can't go far in knockout football. The Copa del Rey is evidence of that. We had a tough Europa League group campaign. We're now taking on the Champions League knockout side. Maybe we just sacrifice it. Maybe we just say, do you know what? Forget it. Like, let's just focus on the lead, try and stay in the title race, and most importantly, lock up a top four place and get Champions League football next year, which is, of course, our primary aim. Still, following game, third and final one, Villarreal away. And after the win against Alaves there, we scraped out the 2-1 victory away against Unai Emery's side. As we know, this is a team we had so many problems with when the save began. They were our very first opponents of the save, and we lost the opening game with Granada 3-0. But the tables appear to be turning. We beat them last year for the first time in a save 3-0. We beat them in Andalusia in the first half of the season. And we were looking for our third straight win against Villarreal. I never thought I'd be able to say that, but this was a time to get it. We scored two early goals in the first half. First Mia, then Antonio, and then six minutes after the restart. Two goals in two games for the speedy winger who has proved to be the biggest bargain of the season so far. 
What do we spend again? 22 mil, something like that. Oh my god, absolutely fleeced Athletic Bilbao, and that's why I, I talk about it a lot, man. Seriously, if you're looking for valuation and good money for a good a good value for money deals with FIFA career mode. Target the players with their contracts that come at the end of the season. You will always, and I mean literally always, be able to get them for no more than market valuation. And nine times out of ten, less than that. Nico Williams, what a star. He scored our third in the game. Suarez scored his second in three to make it 4-0. Job done. And there's no doubt about it now. The psychological hurdle might still exist in the cup, but not so much against Villarreal in the league. Three straight wins against Unai Emery's side. And that big win there keeps us firmly in the title race. As you'll see, 14 games to go. We've cut the gap on Real to two points. We've jumped into position at two. And right now, if results go our way, we're one win away from leading the league with 13 games to go. Long way to go. I'm still primarily focusing on top four, but I know for sure we are in a title race, baby. No doubt about it. The question is, how long can we last? But that will end today's episode of La Liga Karuma, guys. Big thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't, just like. Most love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode of La Liga Karuma mode very soon.